Tonight, we are looking at the five essential 1911s that every enthusiast- uh, That every red-blooded American should own. Yes, and Eli and here will be both picking an actual gun from our current collection to represent those five categories. Let's get into it. Category number one, the classic. Category does the do it all. Category number three, the EDC. Category number four, the barbecue gun. Category number five, the beater. Okay, everyone, welcome to the show. Um, thrilling. I, I mean, I just really think thrilling episode that we have today. I'm excited. Um, I bet you are. I bet you are. You're in Utah. Um, you love cold and uh, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Being from well, the it's East warm today, so that's good. Yeah. So um, here's the deal, guys. we got a lot of 19... Uh, specifically, we've got 10 and almost uh, 11th uh, 1911 that we're looking at today. So for those of you 1911 fans, you've definitely come to the right place. Here's the deal. If we're going to do a video on... Five 1911s that everyone should own. I feel like I, I need a cohort in that. And I would almost rank myself an amateur 1911 enthusiast compared to Eli here. Right. Introduce like yourself. Uh, we have a lot of women uh, that watch the show. <laughs> some some kids watching with their parents at night. Well, yeah. I'm going to keep it PG for them. Okay. I'll try to. Hey, y'all. Uh, Eli here. Uh, I work for Alchemy uh, Custom Weaponry and Cabot Guns. I like 1911s a whole lot. You I do. got I got a few of them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I got an Instagram page myself, 1776 Duck. That sounds weird to talk about, but that's pretty focused on 1911s. Very. So, you know, I feel like it's appropriate for this. this it's video. basically lowriders, 1911s. <laughs> um, yes. Like Scarface shit. Right. You're yeah, like, what, what did I stumble upon here? What uh, year is this page from? <laughs> yep, that's right. <laughs> um, so here's the deal. We're going to go ahead and get into category number one. Okay, category number one. And a couple criteria here before we jump in. One, this is more about philosophical categories right. of 1911s that you must own versus like, this is the model. Correct. It's like, there's a lot of good models mm -hmm. in all of these five categories. And we're just going to kind of tell you, hey, within the category, here's our pick from our actual collection, not a theoretical pick, our actual pick. Yeah. Also, a note, um, so that we don't game the system or no one goes into the full shill card with us, um, we are going to, especially given that Eli works for a, a 1911 company, right. um, we're going to say, hey, you can only highlight a manufacturer once within our list. We may have, I don't actually know if we have any overlap, but um, hey, you, you can't you can't do five Nighthawks, you know, you can't do five uh, T-sauces or whatever right. the thing is, you know, uh, five T-sauces would be, um, I, we, we would have been bought and paid for it at that point. Yeah, I would not do five yeah. T-sauces without a lot of money thrown my way. Okay, so um, category number one, this is what um, we're sort of calling the classic. Yeah. And by classic, we're really meaning five inch, 45 ACP. Right. Well, I think that's kind of just all 1911 should be that. I mean, you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna dabble. deviate, we're, right? We're gonna yeah. dabble. We're here. gonna get a little kinky, if you. But will. there's. A, let me ask you this: Would you argue that for someone's first 1911, it's got to be 45 five inch? Oh, 100 percent. Okay. That, I mean, that that's a hard argument I'd make. Yeah. Yeah. 100. Yeah. percent yeah. Like you know, put some put some hair on your ass. Yeah. And get well, a 45. Well, hair on your ass is you know. <laughs> it's a, it's a touchy subject. Different this sport weekend. for a different gig. <laughs> um, okay, so for my five inch and 45 ACP. Um, again, this is from your current collection, right? Which right. kind of makes this a little bit more interesting. So I'm picking the Springfield TRP. And uh, I only own one TRP. It's the non-railed model. There is a railed model, of mm -hmm. course, um, that is also cool. Um, when we did a, a, a TRP video, I was like, I don't know, man. I, I kind of dig the stainless, you know, non-railed. I've got another other shit that you know yeah. does the real but um look it's a it's a good gun i really like these things they're in that unique price category of like they're like 16 1700 right um which is a tricky price bracket because there's just there's not a lot that's in that bracket no but it is a it's a price bracket that a lot of people are that's the number that comes to their mind when they're like i'm gonna buy a 1911 yeah. that's kind of the number people want to spend on getting Hey, I don't want to go budget, but hey, I don't have five grand That's for some it. crazy shit. Right. It's like, hey, man, I got like fifteen hundred to two grand. Which the, the irony of it, yo, know, that's a lot of money. <laughs> it is. The nineteen eleven is not a cheap game. No, 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 no. no. And not. you go, man. Somehow, uh, fifteen hundred to two thousand is like very mid tier for nineteen eleven. It is. It is. And there's not a lot of manufacturers in it. 
Um, TRP, good gun, super aggressive checkering up front. Um, Love it. So just know, 20 LPI is fantastic. Yeah, just know if you get into this like, hey, the, the gun is not just going to fly out of your hand. I mean, you could be oiled up, covering baby oil, um, which, you, you know, you do. Well, if you wear gloves at the gym, you're not going to want that. Okay. No, you no, know, no, no, you're, no, no, you're no, no, gonna, you know, stick with your polymer guns, okay? You know, stick with that being a little bit weak. But if you really enjoy the pain, you're kind of BDSM kind of guy. That's what I am. I can. I'm I can down tell. for that. I can tell. Okay, guys, big thanks to the sponsor of uh, today's video. That would be LES Concealment. Yeah. Hold that bad boy oh, up. Yeah. Model that thing. Put put it next to that freaking face. You know, look at that. You know, approved. You have to pay for that. Yeah. Um, so uh, LES. Uh, ton of different options, uh, guns, lights, wraps, all that kind of stuff. Literally thousands is what I'm told. Now, I haven't verified that. I haven't. I didn't have time to verify a thousand different design that's options. But that's my understanding. Uh, IWB, OWB, it's all made down in, uh, I believe, Arizona. Um, but U.S. made stuff. That's your actual this is uh, rig poster. on your, uh, well, on a gun that we're not going to review right. yet because that will be coming up. But anyway, check out, check out LAS Concealment. Thanks to those dudes. Okay, I what like do you got? It. A real classic. Yes. Uh, yes, an really actual cool classic gun. This is a 1943 Remington Rand. They don't build guns anymore. They didn't build guns <laughs> at the time that they built this one. Uh -huh. um, they were obviously a typewriter manufacturer, and then World War II happened, and we decided to declare uh, war on the Axis powers, and we whooped their ass. So uh, mm. this gun was there when it happened, uh, and this is a really special gun. This gun's not been uh, re-arsenaled, as you would call it. That's not really a word. Every time I type that in my iPhone. Like what, kind of tuned up? Or, well, you know, know, like during the war and also post-war, um, these guns would get taken to the armor. They would take them apart, throw the parts, like all your slides go in this bucket, all your extractors go in this bucket, and then they just reassemble them because mm. these guns are, as you've felt, not crazy well fit no so uh this gun has never been re reassembled mm. and so it is as damn. issued damn government marked it is government marked yeah a lot of them yeah which is i mean i i'm i'm almost disappointed in myself because i don't own an old like GI 1911. Like I'm like if I can be honest with myself, I judge myself a little bit for you, this. You should flog yourself. Yeah, you know I'm not happy about yeah. it. It is what it is, and I'm not going to lie to the people of America about. It, but I'm I'm kind of pissed that I don't have something like that. Well, I do want to make the caveat: these are not crazy well built guns. No, <laughs> they serve a purpose, and that is putting Nazis uh, underground, six mm. foot under, right? Yeah. And as far as any creature comforts outside of that. You're not going. You're not going to find them. That said, it ran well out here. It did run well. Uh, no issues. I was actually the first time shooting this gun. Yeah, which know? is kind of you know, which is crazy. Momentous. Right. Really. Actually, I enjoyed it. It was a great shooting gun. Sights are terrible. Yes. And uh, obviously, there's some there's some fit issues that I'm not used to because I'm I'm usually running a little higher in guns. But it is a it is it was a fantastic gun. You'll see. I was running it in the correct fashion of the time which is hammer down on a, on a loaded chamber. Well, if you're in a hot zone. Um, these guns, 1911s, were not designed intentionally back in the day. This is going to piss a lot of people off. Mm, uh -oh. To be ran cocked and locked. Should you run cocked and locked? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, if you don't, I will judge you, and so will uh, John Browning and God. Yeah, go back to a Glock. But I ran it, chamber, hammer down, and it, it sucked. Yes. So. And lowering the hammer is terrifying. I was not super thrilled with that, but great gun and it really legitimately a classic gun. Very cool. Okay, category number two. Um, we're calling this the kind of that general purpose, do a little bit of everything, like the do it all category. All. Yeah. Um, so we've got, actually we've got fairly similar, but there, there's some nuance on it, right. but yeah. I'm, gonna t I'm gonna tell you my honest answer on this from a spec perspective. I couldn't bring the actual gun that I would bring for this. I brought a damn close second. Um, my do-it-all specs would be commander length, mm -hmm. so which is... What I brought. No, but how? what's comma commander Oh, oh what is commander yeah. Oh, okay, four and a quarter inch. Four barrel. and a quarter, right? Yeah. Government would be five inch. Mm -hmm. um, so my do-it-all would be commander length railed, right? So I've got the option to carry it. Um, and for me, nine mil, just cause I like the versatility of it. I like the extra capacity. Now, because of some overlap on manufacturers, I elected to leave that gun out. And what I'm gonna show you instead is that gun with one change. Uh, 
Okay, so the one that I have brought is all of that except five inch. So I've got a Wilson Combat um, protector. I have a bit of a soft spot for this gun because this was actually when we started doing videos. This was the first thing that like a manufacturer let me review. And then at the end of it, I was like, you know, and I bought it, you know, at the at the end of it. I love this gun. I actually have a real soft spot for it because it really is just a great gun. I've, I don't think I've ever had a malfunction on it. So it's nine mil, it's railed, it's five inch, um, ambi safety, really good iron sights. It just does everything really good. It'd be a bit big for me personally for a carry gun. I just don't like carrying guns that big. Right. Um, or it'd be a pretty heavy carry gun for that matter too. But like, that is for me still one of my favorite 1911s. I use the piss out of this thing. Well, Wilson Combat got me into 1911s, with, you know, back in the day. So I, I, I personally am glad you had a Wilson out here. And yeah. That's a fantastic gun. Great yeah. gun. Great gun. All right, what do you got? So I went a little different. Um, I went with the Cabot Rebellion. Mm -hmm. So, you know, originally I was going to do all 45s, but I decided I needed to appeal to those with a little weaker constitution. Uh, maybe you can't handle the 45, it's all right. We'll get you in a nine millimeter. And I actually do like nine millimeter 1911s, but it is fun to make fun of people for it. Mm. So this is the Cabot Rebellion. Um, just like your Wilson there, it is a, a bull barrel. Great gun. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of engineering and ingenuity in this gun that makes it a lot different than most uh, 9mm 1911s, and it was designed specifically to be a 9mm 1911. Um, it does not have a 45 counterpart, so this is the only gun in the Cabot line like that. Yeah. Great looking gun, very modern, especially if you know kind of how I feel about guns and, and what I think guns should look like. This is kind of an oddity, but great shooting gun, fast shooting gun. I can, I can really uh, burn it down with this gun. Mm -hmm. And um, you can get it with a rail with an optic. Um, this particular one is my summer carry gun. Mm -hmm. So I went a little bit lighter, but I also do have the steel frame here. So, um, you know, it's great for a range day. Uh, it's great for carrying. So kind of go back to the do-all. Yeah, well, and those usually come in an aluminum frame if I remember they, right. They do, yes. This is a uh, unique example. You can get it in steel, mm. but a lot of people buy them in the aluminum. But I, I like, you know, I like steel. Yeah. I'm kind of... We did a, a video on the Rebellion, like, um, shoot, I mean, when we were, like, brand new. I really like that gun. I've always liked that gun. The top treatment is really cool oh, yeah. on those. Really great top. Probably one of my all-time favorite top treatments. Oh, yeah. Um, and just, yeah, solid gun. Solid Excellent gun. gun. Yep. All right, guys, before we get into category number three, um, if you're looking for any ways to support the 1911 Syndicate, uh, at our core, we're a real estate company. We're an unorthodox one. Uh, we could even, if we took a degenerate like you and you sold some of your 1911s, that's called a down payment, my friend, mm. is what that is. I, I don't know if I can commit to that. We'll get you in a little place, oh, yeah. right? Fix it up, get a little white picket fence, get all your ladies or whatever you do. Maybe like a garage I don't for my car. And a garage, he does have pretty, pretty, <laughs> his car. <laughs> completely makes sense when you see it. You're like, ah, oh, yeah, that, of course that motherfucker has that car. Um, uh, but we've got that. Um, stay tuned. I don't know exactly when this will come out. We do have a very cool product drop at the end of the year. And um, yeah, stay tuned to that. Sign up for the newsletter if you ever need any updates on that. That's where it will be announced. All right, category number three, um, EDC. I feel every, like you need a, yeah, you, you, you need a carry gun. Well, you, you should carry a 1911 and only, uh, you know, only those who are lacking testosterone Mm. You know, don't carry a 1911. Yeah, and even that, hey, get on that TRT, boys, and, you know. Oh, yeah. Get that shit pumped. Listen, if I, if I, with all the 1911s I carried, if I got on gear juice, it would just, oh I wouldn't God, be able to dude. fit in this truck. Oh, no, you'd be jacked up like a gorilla. <laughs> like, you wouldn't even. <laughs> and be I'd be hair, I'd look like Sasquatch as much hair as I'd have. This is very true. Um, so, uh, I, I'll fully admit, I did not carry a 1911 for a lot of years because I just didn't have one that foot, foot the bill. And eventually I was like, all right, I, I, I got to go down this path. You're 1911. Syndicate. Yeah, I know. It's a little bit embarrassing. And I was I was the 19 I was the Sig 365 XL Syndicate for for quite a while. Please watch your tone when you're yeah. talking to me. Yeah, it's a plastic gun, by the it's way. Disgusting. Yeah, it's plastic on the bottom half of that thing. <laughs> um, so mine, uh, we did we did a actually we've done videos I think on all the stuff I've got out here. So <clears throat> I've got the Nighthawk Treasurer. I we I had them purpose make this for my carry gun. You know, th this was I mean clearly meant to be a carry gun. Some of the things I elected on this, Nighthawk makes great guns. We've had them on the channel multiple times. The Treasure was a new model. They've got the Counselor. That's a, that's another good one that would fit into this category. Um, mm -hmm. I did the Treasure, so it's Nighthawk Custom, so you got a bunch of options. I did an aluminum frame, um, right. kind of almost like we were talking about with the Rebellion. It's like, hey, typically it's aluminum. So you could do this steel or aluminum. I wanted to shave weight just because I don't like having a bunch of weight, uh, you know, banging around near my, you know, 
Well, I see, I, I carry 45, so there's already a lot of weight right there. It's enlarged already. It's just, yeah. you know, that's not going to be that it's just big a, a swell. difference. There's just a <laughs> swell as it is. Um, so I've got aluminum frame, uh, Ambi safety. I did the iOS cut. So I've got three different plates for this. I've got this one, uh, which I think is actually the shield footprint, but it takes the Holosun EPS. That's a, uh, you know, I, I know you're- that's from, the, that's from the 51st state of China, ain't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it does work well. Yeah, but, well, I'm uh, glad. Yeah, uh, I've got an iron sight plate. I've got an RMR plate. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's cool. Guns DLC, titanium nitride on the trigger. I really like that. I, like I've been a big fan of this gun ever since I got it. I still carry it. Um, sometimes people send me a DM or something. They're, they're like, you still carrying that? I'm like, you're damn right, man. Like that's still my daily carry gun. Well, so good. big fan of this bad boy. Well, I'm glad you've been baptized in the waters of steel and you're not carrying around no sissy gun. No, yeah. I've, I've migrated. Only when I travel. When I travel, I will take a cheap gun because if TSA gets a little sporty, we don't need like a six thousand dollar gun going missing. Well, I'm a gangster, so I don't really, I don't really feel that way. What do you got? I got a faux five, forty five. Mm -hmm. This is the Prime Elite Carrier from Alchemy. It'd be weird if I didn't carry Alchemy, to be quite honest. It would, it would. Yeah. Um, but in all honesty, I mean, I carried an Alchemy before I started working for Alchemy, so this really isn't that big of a deal. It's hard chrome because I do like chrome. There's a lot of chrome on my car. There's a lot of chrome in my pants. Uh, so I'm, I'm a big fan of that. I'm a God, big fan the of chrome. spice, man. You the know? spice. Uh, some people will say that it's like bad for you. It's like toxic. Uh, uh, those people can go to hell. Uh, I'll, I will die the way I want to die. So Let me ask you this. Yeah. Because I'll up? probably never get to ask you this again. Okay. If Chris is sitting here right now, who goes to hell, me or Chris? Chris. Well, he don't carry a 1911. He don't even he like does him. Not. Yeah, he, he doesn't. He doesn't like him. Listen. He you doesn't. Don't, you can't get into the celestial gates carrying a polymer gun it's just it's in, you know i didn't make the rules okay no the man's name was john moses that's two people from the bible yep okay yep i didn't make the rules but this is a hey, 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 just real quick oh yeah chris blow suck it <laughs> continue I, I will i got the ring hammer yeah because you know if you like it you should put a ring on it classic big fan Ooh, of that yeah i like you that know. that's a good one uh well she's pretty good looking so I pay attention to that. But, uh, you know, four and a quarter inch. I'm actually, the next gun I've got being built right now is a five inch gun with a light because I do like carrying a five inch gun. Sure. Nothing wrong with the four and a quarter. Uh, I just am slowly getting back to, you know, back to tradition, five inch 45. But this is a fantastic gun. She's- Which model is it? I don't remember if you Prime said. Prime Elite Carry. Prime Elite Carry, So yeah. that has the Magwell flush cut uh, and crown barrel, HRT cut, gold bead. And then I put the ball cuts and the ring hammer on it. And then I do have the Quantico G10 double diamond grips as well. Mm. So it's not only a sexually arousing gun, uh, it is a functionally amazing gun as well. Yeah, it's so. good, good. I've, I've got a uh, Alchemy Quantico, right. um, the single stack, not the high cap. Oh yeah. And um, same, one of the most aesthetically pleasing guns that I own. Um, Tight fit, you know. Yeah. Well, it's, it's hand it's, fit. Every yeah. every aspect of say, it is hand fit. Yeah, you know, all hand um, fit. You know, it's just a killer gun. Yeah, they're they're great. I'm I'm very blessed to work for the company, especially, dude. What twenty five year old gets to work for like his dream company? You yeah, know? and uh, it's it's crazy. It's I, I awesome. mean, only crazier given that you look forty seven. <laughs> And we, right. somehow we deducted 22 years from his age. <laughs> it's fucking, fucking year 2023. I don't know what's going oh, on. But I love this gun. It stays in my britches. And I, you know, I like it there. <laughs> small, small things that Alchemy does too that I always find really cool is the grip screws. Uh, oh, they're, yeah, up. they're they're clocked the correct. Uh, it's just a know, small, they're, they're it's correct. a small touch. But I can never not unsee it right. when other manufacturers don't do it now. Like yeah. they really kind of jacked me up for that. Well, actually on my own personal guns that aren't Alchemy, I've started getting the O-rings and clocking them myself. So it's it, it does change your outlook on yeah, it. But it's cool. fantastic gun. I love it. You got a great carry gun too. Um, but you know, yours isn't a 45. So you may wound the person. I'm actually dissipating their soul. Yeah, they will actually explode. Yeah, yeah they, when they, they, when they there's just it. no soul left. Yeah, no. Okay, category number four. <laughs> I think probably the most fun category uh, by its very nature. So- yes. What is a barbecue gun? Well, a barbecue gun is one of them guns you strap on your hip when you're going out to a function. You're open carrying clearly because you want to flex mm -hmm. on the other people mm -hmm. who you know don't have a gun worth open carrying, yep. and you want to say, "Hey, I got a badass gun, and you got some you know stupid polymer gun that I would not want to look at. I, w I wouldn't want to be seen carrying a polymer gun." Sure. So yeah, it's a barbecue gun. Usually they're extremely flashy or they have some order of being expensive. Gold or, yeah, you know, that's crazy. a traditional barbecue gun. Nick, bright nickel plated gold. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, they're they're just a flex on uh, 
on other people. Yeah. And I'm about that. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you you go first on yours? I mean, you got a you got a really nice pick on this. Okay. Yeah. So my barbecue gun is is actually not a traditional barbecue gun mm -mm. Uh, in the sense that we just described, uh, but it is if you're kind of in the know. You know what I mean? Like if you're wearing one of those like sheepdog shirts. You're not gonna. Oh, you're not gonna appreciate no. this. You know, but no. this is a gun that needs to be appreciated by people that are in the know. Yeah. So this is actually a really cool gun and very special to me. So I graduated uh, college in 2020. Well, they sent us home in 2020 because of the you know <laughs> end of the world, sure. and we just never went back. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. it was weird, okay. you know. Whereas a lot of people get these crazy graduation parties, whatever. I never really got that. Not that I care about that, to be honest with you. But I wanted to do something for myself. So I had a 1919 Colt government that was not correct. It wasn't super off base, but there was a couple things and the finish wasn't correct. And I sent it to Bob Reeves at Nighthawk, um, good friends with, with the folks there at Nighthawk, great people. And I said, I want to build a resto mod true. And I've seen people do these guns and they, they just never hit all the details. And I'm kind of a weird about that. Mm -hmm. You know, they do a Delta hammer on the gun. It'd be like a 1918 with a Delta hammer, whatever. So I would said, Bob, I want this thing to look like, if you hold it over here, I want people to think, oh, that's an original 1919 Colt. But when you get up top, you're like, Holy shit! Yeah, that's a hot rod. Something else going so, on here. So, frame uh, frame was welded up, refit, new barrel, new sights. We actually kept the original controls and they tightened them up for me. Uh, carry bevel. They engraved my name on the front strap, and I got giraffe bone on it. I couldn't afford ivory at the time, Man. but I did have giraffe bone on it. Uh, I believe it's 24 karat gold B front sight, Harrison uh, rear. Um, it is the correct hammer, but this is a Turnbull hammer. You can't you can't really do a modern trigger job on the original hammers because the heat treating of this vintage is not super strong. So this is at a distance, a classic gun, but when you get up on it, you're like, oh, that that's mm -hmm. a guy who really knows his stuff, really uh, kind of gets it. And people give me heck because, I mean, you can see right there, <coughs> it's just, crazy. A, just a few rounds and it's already wanting to tear into you, you oh, know, yeah. but- uh, You're gonna get torn up on that. But people who complain about that, I don't wanna be friends with them. They are of a weaker, you know, yeah, generation. Generation, right? Yeah. And well, I'm, your generation, actually. I, well, I'm Gen Z, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of weird, you know. I mean, yeah. I carry one of these and have a car from 1963, so it all makes sense. And yeah. glasses from some porn shoot that we're I, I, it does. Identify. Yes, it does look like I've, I was at a porn shoot, and I'm not going to deny that I wasn't. Yeah, well, you're in Utah, so there's it, it is known as a state where some weird shit happens, my friend. <laughs> but that's my gun, um, you know, kind it's of a great. sleeper it's barbecue It's great, man. Gun. That, that thing's yeah. fantastic. I, I really so, like that build. I've carried this gun at every major event in my life. Mm. Like, my best friend got married. I carried it. I was his best man, carried it. And uh, the wife didn't like that. She's like, why do you need a gun? I was like, I don't know. Why don't I why, need a gun? Why are you, and I turned to my buddy, why are you getting married to this chick? Yeah. yeah. They got divorced. It's okay. Yeah. Um, what do you got? Your fault. Um, <laughs> well, okay, so this is where I game the system a little bit. Uh, th there's, I've got nice 1911s. There's multiple things that would be a nice 1911 you could wear and qualify as a barbecue gun, but I only have one pick where you're like, well, clearly, yeah. if you're trying to flex a little bit, which and is what a barbecue gun is. This is a flex. You know, like this is a pretty cool flex piece. It has been on the channel before. So I'll just show you the completed package, uh, complete with salt remaining from the Bonneville salt flats. <laughs> So this, I would show up to your barbecue in this and you'd be like, Jake, why did you bring two guns? Well, I'll tell you why I brought two guns because they are a matching left hand, right hand set, okay? So this vintage classic, so this is from Cabot. So this is Cabot vintage classic, as is this. Um, this was actually how I met Cabot at SHOT Show shit. I mean, I don't know. Probably that was way before I was there. I don't know, five, six, maybe yeah. even seven years ago or, or something like that. And I saw this, they had it at the booth and I thought that is such a fantastic 1911. I ordered one on the spot. I went by the last day and uh, spoke with uh, one of the dudes over there who might remember me if he sees this video. And um, I was like, I gotta throw in an order for one of those. Had the gun for years. Then I heard this this thing uh, that Cabot had full lefty 1911s. Right. And I thought, well, that sounds like a great excuse for us to do a video since I'm one of the lefty gun tubers. And so they made me a full lefty version of it. So what we have is a matching left hand, right hand set. Um, the only thing that's really different is the safeties. Um, other than that, they are the same. So like the notably cool things about this, uh, probably not gonna show you just for the sake of, I don't know, ATF and shit, but um, 
the serial numbers are the same except inverted of each other. So uh, I believe I said when we did the full video of this, which by the way, thanks to no one, because no one watched our actual <laughs> dedicated video that uh, ruined much of my personal property when we did the video on these. Um, if the video on the righty is one, two, three, four, five, six, the serial number on the lefty is six, five, four, three, two, one. They're the same thing except reversed Inverse, of each other. Yeah. That's cool. The bullet on the lefty one spins the opposite direction. Um, they reverse the rifling. I mean, it just doesn't get much cooler than that. It just really does. I, I mean, from a sheer, like, cool level, it doesn't get much cooler. Not to mention, in Jake's fantasy world, if some shit popped off at the barbecue and everyone's like, what do we do? And I'm like, stand back, you know, Natalia. And, and you know, and then I just start burning it down. And that's full five, so they're they're not getting into heaven when you when you Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that. these dudes are spoke. Now, Grand, the accuracy, dual wielding, there might be some but a collateral well, yeah. issues. Well, I mean, 245s, your blast distance is the, is the size of Hiroshima. So what, what, <laughs> yeah. what difference does it make how accurate it is? But do you know what my favorite part of your setup is? Huh. You need a manservant to get you, you set do. up. Yeah, you do. You know, that's that's what I love. You know, when yeah. you yell Trying at Crispy. Trying to get this on your back. Yeah. You're like. Solo. You're like, uh, Crispy, uh, come here and be my manservant. Yeah, and I was smoking uh, a cigar. Uh, um, please please strap upon my cabots. Yeah, and then this was a, a custom holster I had made. I'm trying to remember the name of the damn company, but I'm blinking out. But um, they made me my Castor Troy rig. <laughs> so we even have the year the Castor Troy uh, was unfortunately uh, killed by John Travolta, 1997 Face Off <laughs> classic movie. That's um, before I was born. Yeah, if you don't, <laughs> oh, have you seen Face Off though? No. <gasps> it's a, it, listen, okay. <sighs> I'm 25. I can only like so much old stuff, okay? It I mean, is my ring John Woo, dude, 1997. My ringtone is Blazing Saddles, okay? You got to give me a little bit where I can get it. Okay, on your flight home. I'll watch it. Yeah, to I humidity, get... you can watch right. Face Off. <laughs> <To> humi <laughs> Fuck that. Category number five. <laughs> We're of the opinion um, that everyone kind of needs a beater. You know, that gun where you're like, I don't really care what happens to it. If I'm gonna go camping, you know, right. maybe throw it in your bag. Like if it takes some dings and some scuffs, you're not gonna lose sleep over it. No, um, can't be worried about it. Yeah, we all kind of need that. So I'll tell you what I have selected. This gun has now been affectionately named Ashley uh, for those of you that would have seen our T-Sauce video. Um, much to my surprise, people uh, watch that and everyone you didn't happen to see that video, did you? Not yet, no. Okay, so, you I know, apologize. I, you, you should be sorry. Um, <laughs> you know, in, in fact, fuck you for not seeing that video. But life goes on. You know what I'm saying? Well, what caliber is that? It's in 9 mil. Yeah. Well, fuck you for carrying a 9 mil. Oh, okay, so we're going <laughs> to we're, we're gonna insult the host. <laughs> Come on the host show and insult the host. <laughs> so, I likened this to you're looking to have a fun night, right? And you're looking to have a fun night with a 10 but you can only pull a three. Her name's Ashley. She's the hostess at Chili's, right? And, but she's also kind of awesome. And it turns out like she's a good, loyal woman. And it's like, what well, turns out the tea sauce is kind of my Ashley. It's like, I would like to have like just some banger of a gun for my beater, but it's like, hey, look, man, I got a three that's been pretty damn good to me here. And so the tea sauce, I'm gonna tell you something that's a little bit embarrassing. I don't even remember the model name of this gun. It's just a T sauce to me. Is that what not is it? it? A duty. It's a duty, <laughs> which is just ironic. That's... Just ironic. Um, it's the duty um, in nine mil full rail, ambi safety. The deal. Zero texture on the front strap and some shitty rubber grips. But hot damn, the thing works. And it's like eventually you got to throw your hands in the air and you just go. Well, I don't know what to tell you. The damn thing works, and it's it's people are apparently in the comments getting these for like four hundred bucks, and you're like, I don't know what to tell you, man. I guess just go buy one. What what else am I supposed to say here? I have holsters and whatnot. I think I probably did too. Yeah. yeah. And yet, a completely functional, reliable, forged 1911 that's like sub five hundred bucks. So I mean, the world's just a crazy place right now. I don't know. The, the, that it is, yes. uh, especially the part of the world where that gun's from. Uh, yeah, they're, they're not doing so hot over there right now. Well, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't believe in taking home a three, okay? And so my beater, listen, I just I just don't believe in it, okay? okay. I just, you never stop stopping is how I feel about it. Okay, I don't even know what that means, but yeah, go on. And so my beater, Ed Brown Special Forces, okay? okay. Because we ain't worried about taking home threes. We're bringing home the bacon every night. Yeah, so I mean, a my... bacon is a pig. 
but well, that, I mean, I'm cook, cook bacon. I'm not talking trying to make a you know yeah. reference of the of the female or and or gun, but this is not a cheap gun. No, I don't even know. What did Ed Brown's run like three? Yeah. Yeah, three-ish. But you can see, like, I have truly... Oh, yeah, no, like, she's this, beaten up. This has not been well taken No, care. no, no, she's worn. There's, uh, there's and shit I, going on. I have never cleaned this gun either. Oh, my God. Uh, it runs like a top. She's got a Trigicon RMR, which is worth more than that gun. And uh, X300, which might it's, be worth more than that gun. It's pretty close. Depending pretty on where close. you buy it. It's pretty close. Uh, but here's the thing is, uh, it's you, <coughs> you can't be a gangster 90% of the time. All right? You just got to go full bore 100% of the time, balls to the wall, mm. uh, Crispy, try not to start singing here, uh, but balls to the wall, mm -hmm. and that's what I've done. And I, I truly do like if I was if I'm going hiking or like on the pontoon boat, I throw that in there and just keep on going. How do you it's, say that? Pontoon. Pontoon. Pon. What do you What do you say? Pontoon. That's why I said pontoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just yeah. making sure I was saying it right. Pontoon. So like when we when we went out and shot this thing, I didn't I didn't even all it up. So you know. What? So what? So and you said you put what in it? Oh, I did. I, well, I didn't put no all in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, I mean, it ran like a top. She's great. She's got a great trigger. Um, you know, I it's very low optioned. Uh, in all honesty, although a lot of Ed Browns don't have a red dot cut, so I was pretty happy about mm, that. But yeah. I mean, she's just a tank. It's it's kind of got this black tee kind of coat finish, which is not really great looking, but <laughs> in, in the in the same yeah. breath, kind of cool looking, I guess. Um, but it's a bit retro. It is um, two piece Magwell. Mm. You know, not one dose yeah. as as people who drive the same car as me maybe yeah. would say south of the border um but man it's it's just a fantastic gun uh i really i like ed brown's people really don't talk about them too they much don't. you don't hear a lot yeah, about them I, I like them i i do and um you know i just you get to a point and i really think you're there i just think you're like kind of having you know identity crisis you know have to like appeal to the to those people and uh so you get to a point, man, you're just like, ah, man, like even, even though I'm not a good enough shot to justify having just gangster pistols all the time, mm -hmm. I just can't really, I, I struggle going back down. Like I feel things and mm -hmm. most people are like, ah, oh, you know, that's not really that bad. And it's, it's not, but I feel them and I'm like, I know what that's supposed to feel like on a $4,000 gun. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, why not have that, you know, you only live once. So why not have that refined experience at all times. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, man, I'm, I'm with you. Throw some mole in that, take it on the pontoon boat, and <laughs> you just... I don't sound like that. I just said... Sound like what? You, you're, I'm not you're, doing an accent. You, yeah, well, I feel like you're you're exaggerating here. Uh, absolutely not. I, you know, it just all it up. I didn't even all it up. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You know? You know, you'll notice the grip screws... On this, yeah, are nicely, those quite not clocked. <laughs> they're, they're pretty nicely lined well, up. Well, you know what I love about this when yeah. I was playing with yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, um, sure. That they're, I think they're supposed to be a cutout for this ambi. It's like an Ed Brown style ambi safety. This one doesn't have it, mm. but um, you can actually just see that the safety is just moving like in that. You see it's just in moving the, grip. the mold of the, sure. the rubber. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, which is fine. Hey, you know what? I know the dudes at T-Sauce. I mean, what they're doing is good, though. Um, because they're actually really nice. We're poking fun. They're actually really right. nice. They've been cool folks over and there. And if you don't mind, I kind of want to maybe get something off my heart. Maybe maybe yeah. bring it down a little I bit. I think if there's ever been a safe place for us to have a private conversation, this is the time. So here's how I feel about it, right? I'm mm -hmm. 25. Yeah. A lot of people that are 25 don't have the opportunities I do where I can I can carry a you know, bitching ass gun all the time. Sure. I, I, I know that, yeah. right? I think that in order to have the next generation want those bitchin' ass guns, we've got to get them in a 1911. Because the 1911 is kind of in a weird spot mm -hmm. where the people who <coughs> really used it are now aging out, but new shooters are not getting into them. Mm -hmm. So I think guns like this are ultra important to not just shooting, but to the 1911 story. Because if I can, t if, it, if you know, a guy comes to me and he says, hey man, you know, I'm thinking about having a 1911, I can only spend X, Y, Z. I'm not gonna be an asshole and be like, well, you know, just, just save up, you know? I'm gonna say, hey man, get that T-Sauce and I'll, I'll give them this of that price range, nothing compares. Not nothing even close, compares. not even close. Um, you know, absolutely takes the cake for your, you know, sub $800 market. Mm -hmm. I want these people to get into these guns. They realize, hey man, that's a 
badass pistol. Yeah. Maybe I take the next step. It's a gateway Maybe drug. Maybe I take the next, yeah. I want to get them hooked on it. I guess I'd say this. Look, there, there, there's plenty of other categories uh, that we could come here and explore. You could go down 10 mil paths and, oh. you know, you, you could do all kinds of yeah. categories where you're like, oh, you got to have one of those. You got to have one of those. You got to, but it's like, hey, look, this is a good core five yeah. that for those of you who are like, I'd, I'm either into it and looking to expand or I'd like to get into it. Hey, look, hey, here's just some food for thought. You know, you got your do it all, you got your beater, your EDC, you know, you got some different categories there. And as we know, you're, you're going to have to play along here. Okay. So, cause, cause what, what I'm going to say is, Hey, if you're carrying, um, your, your Ed Brown on your pontoon boat, um, and there was an incident out on the water, right? And you just, smoke, you know, some some drunkard out there, you know, harassing I'd people. Sink and, his boat. You know, you sink his boat, and then you sink him, right. right? You sink him. At that point, you would need and want a form of insurance to, you know, right. you, you got to have someone to call. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Chris and I, and um, you know, you're like a proxy, Chris, right now. You know, so we're just going to lump you into the conversation. Much smaller. Um, yes. Um, <laughs> but everyone is really right. at the end of the day. He's a large man. <clears throat> There's a. Uh, company we use called Firearms Legal Protection. Um, you guys can use a code. It's 1911. Plug it in. Saves you like a third off the different uh, things. For someone like you that travels a lot, they have the travel mm. man plan. So, hey, lot. when you travel and you're legally justified carrying in other states, although it's constitutional here, baby. Hey, this is the land of John Moses Brown. We don't care what you do. Okay. Um, I carry a BAR cool. out here. Yeah. Oh, oh, boy, that would be a <laughs> spicy pick. Um, but they got the travel plan. They got the stay-at-home plan for those of you that are that guy, which is me. No judgment. Um, and then they've got the uh, family plan for those of you that are into that kind of thing, too. So uh, check that out, Firearms Legal Protection. It's been um, good having you here. Let's see how it goes for you in the comments. What do you think? How does it pan out? Probably not well. We'll see. You never know. I'm not traditionally liked, uh, mm. you know, because I do have a bit of a, you know. You got a thing. I got a thing. You got yeah. a thing, man. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of in this weird notion where... The young people don't like me because I'm kind of act old, but the old people don't like me because I kind of act young, you know? But We don't know what to make of it. You'll you. see me going down the street in my 63 with one of those stuck in my pants. No holster, of course. Just hitting the bags, listening to some Easy e you Yeah. Know? I'm kind of a cultural phenomenon. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you drove me home from whiskey the other night in a in a minivan listening to old, old rap. Going about 20 miles an hour. Yeah. You did not yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. It was an interesting experience. <laughs> you know, it was an interesting experience, but to each their own. Okay, guys, uh, comment below, and uh, we will see you next time.